Welcome to The Real News Network. I'm Kayla Rivara in Baltimore. Former Israeli Prime Minister Ariel Sharon has died at the age of 85. Since 2006, Sharon has been in a coma on life support in a hospital outside of Tel Aviv. Among other positions, Sharon was Israel's Prime Minister from 2000 to 2006, as well as the Israeli Defense Minister from 1981 to 1983, and remains a controversial figure today. Sharon has been praised for withdrawing Israeli forces from the Gaza Strip in 2005. Critics, however, say that he was the key architect of the Israeli apartheid state. They also note an Israeli inquiry that found Sharon bore, quote, personal responsibility for his role in the massacres at the Sabra and Shatila Palestinian refugee camps in Lebanon in 1982. It is estimated that almost 1,000 civilians were killed. Now joining us is Shir Hever. Shir is an economic researcher at the Alternative Information Center, a Palestinian-Israeli organization active in Jerusalem and Beit Sahar. Welcome to The Real News. Hi, Kayla. Good to be here. So, Shir, who was Ariel Sharon and, and what is his legacy? Ariel Sharon is a figure with quite a long history. He's been involved in so many things, it's a bit hard to list all of them. Uh, he's been a soldier uh, in every one of Israel's wars, and like many Israeli officers, uh, made the jump from military service to politics and became uh, and, and reached the highest possible uh, positions in the Israeli political system. Um, he fought uh, in um, uh, the war of 1948, in which Israel was founded. But I think uh, the most uh, well-known um, military activity that he was involved in was the massacre in the village of Kibia. Uh, in 1953, in which he commanded the notorious Unit 101. Uh, and uh, this unit was charged with a sort of reprisal attacks or, or, or revenge attacks against random Palestinian villages in response to uh, attacks against Israel. Uh, and the, the unit specialized in attacking villages where they uh, killed innocent civilians in the village of Kibia. Uh, over 60 people were murdered uh, under Sharon's uh, command. Uh, later on, uh, Sharon uh, continued to uh, rise in the military rank, in, in military rank and command larger forces. Uh, and he was a very disobedient uh, officer. He often, he, 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 on several occasions, uh, he disobeyed a direct order. Uh, and what's interesting is that despite all that, he kept on advancing. He kept on getting more praise and more responsibilities. Uh, David Ben Gurion, Israel's first prime minister, called him a pathological liar. And nevertheless, continued to use him because it was convenient uh, to uh, employ so much uh, violence in order to terrorize Palestinian uh, villages and uh, to terrorize nearby countries. Um, in the, the war of Le uh, against Lebanon, in which he um, played a very crucial role, some argue that he actually uh, deceived the Israeli government itself into getting more committed into that war than they initially planned uh, while he was Minister of Defense. Uh, he was uh, very much involved in orchestrating and especially not in preventing the Sabra and Shatila massacre. Following that uh, massacre, uh, which Sharon uh, simply said is, is nothing but Arabs killing Arabs, he didn't uh, think there was anything uh, um, problematic about this massacre. Uh, but he stood in front of the committee and the committee recommended that he should never be allowed to be a minister of defense again. And nevertheless, he became not only Minister of Defense, but he became Prime Minister. And in Israel, a Prime Minister has all the portfolios and then can divide them to others. So he was, uh, for, for a brief time, also Minister of Defense again. And as a, 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 a Prime Minister, uh, he continued uh, the escalation of violence against Palestinians uh, in the uh, course of the Second Intifada and then uh, the withdrawal from Gaza. Uh, so he has quite a long list of things. I, I, I will stop here because they're, knowing that I'm not uh, really doing justice uh, to uh, all of his uh, military involvements and the, all the people that he uh, killed or ordered killed. But it should also be said that in addition to that, he was a one of Israel's most corrupt politicians. He was involved in uh, several uh, scandals uh, regarding bribery, uh, money laundering, and, uh, and so on. Uh, and uh, just as the investigation against him was about to go public and go to the to a very critical stage, he had a stroke. And at that moment, uh, he went into a coma and um, his political career was over. That actually enabled uh, his political party, Kadima, uh, which he formed, uh, to run in the next election without uh, having to face all of the repercussions of a criminal investigation against the prime minister. 
This year, I wanted to talk about how, how Ariel Sharon was remembered before that stroke and read a quote from the New York Times, which said, quote, he was believed to be preparing for further territorial concessions to establish a Palestinian state when he became ill. What is your response to this? Um, Sharon was anything but um, uh, very intelligent. He was uh, a, one of the uh, most uh, bright politicians that Israel uh, had. Uh, and um, that, uh, and he always believed, uh, or at least acted as if he believes, that he knows what's best regardless of the orders that he gets from above. And the interesting thing is that while he was just a soldier, he kept doing things his own way, even when his office, commanding officers thought that he was wrong. But when he rose in rank and became prime minister, he uh, tried to concentrate authority around the prime minister's office. Now, the Israeli occupation of the Palestinian territories has been uh, very chaotic at the stage when he took power as prime minister. Uh, officers, you could say maybe they were inspired by his own example, have d done whatever they wanted to do. And Sharon promoted the construction of the wall of separation in the West Bank and the withdrawal from the Gaza Strip in order to enable Israel to better control that territory. But being bright as he was, uh, he also managed to sell that policy as if he's promoting the peace process, as if he's a moderate prime minister. And, and his uh, uh, one of his chief advisors, Dov Weissglas, said the withdrawal from Gaza is putting the peace process in formaldehyde. That means uh, that Israel is not really giving up the occupation, not really giving, even, giving uh, up control even of the Gaza Strip itself. Uh, it's taken a unilateral move, but it would seem as if Israel is willing to evacuate from territory that it conquered, and that would create the image that Israel is willing to pr uh, proceed on the peace process. Well, of course, the Palestinians are not. And uh, this was really the plan uh, of Sharon. Uh, and in a speech that he gave to the Israeli Knesset, he said, we need to withdraw from uh, Gaza because otherwise the Jews uh, are no longer a majority in the uh, land control, in, in the land, in the territory controlled by Israel. But what he didn't say is that even after the withdrawal, Israel continues to control Gaza, continues to levy taxes there, continues to impose a siege. That means that Jews are indeed no longer a majority in Israel. Unfortunately, we are out of time for this segment, but please join us for part two of our conversation with Shir Hever on the legacy of Ariel Sharon.